It's your Daily Dose of Donna. Happy Wednesday, August 30th. We made it. We made it to the first day of school. I already have been up since 5 a.m. I worked out in the dark down here in my office, which is like also a bonus room. I got a little workout in, showered, got my kids up, got them dressed. They were excited. You know how they're always excited on the first day of school? They're always excited. Third and fifth grade, they're so freaking cute. They picked out their outfits like two days ago and they brushed their teeth fast and they got, ate breakfast and we drove over to their school. I usually put them on a bus because it's about 30 minutes away, but I drove them. We had a morning breakfast for the parents. I saw their teachers. I saw their classrooms. Nothing can make you happier as a parent to see your kids happy, especially in school. And that was just the best thing ever. So I did that, came back and man, oh man, guys. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night because I stayed up late because I was watching Below Deck Down Under. I'm still not up to speed. I still had to watch this week's episode, but as I was watching it, I did get a lot of DMs, a lot of text messages. Donna, are you listening? And that's what I'm going to talk about today. And I'm going to first start by saying this. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Donna Bowling. I'm a former... <laughs> For I got like nervous talking about this. You'll see why. I'm a former award-winning casting director. I worked in the scripted department in casting from 2003 to 2017. I had my own business. We cast a bunch of shows for Disney, Nickelodeon, ABC, Fox, MTV, like a bunch of different shows. Then I was an agent, a talent agent for a solid year before I kind of uh, went out and started my own business. So I'm in this world. I'm in this industry, but obviously never like this. This show started in January. Okay. So I want to be really clear. This is all brand new for me to be, I had a podcast, but I was talking about marketing and video content before this. So this is my first time really diving in this, this year into like the gossip world. And I freaking love what I do because this is the shit that I want to talk about all day long with my friends. I said this yesterday on yesterday's show, like I don't have a lot of real life friends that are obsessed with all the things that I am. I have my friends that love Real Housewives. I have my friends that love Vanderpump Rules. I have my friends that love Big Brother. I have my friends that love, you know, the occasional, uh, I don't know, other reality show or TV show, but I don't really have anyone that loves it all. And Daily Dose of Donna gives me an opportunity to talk to you guys about all the things that I'm obsessed with. And it's been so rewarding because I think in this show, which has grown tremendously, we're about to hit a hundred, over a hundred thousand downloads. I want you guys to know that day one of the show had 18 downloads. Okay. January 6th had 18 downloads. So I'm well over, you know, thousands downloads a day, thousands and thousands of YouTube watches a day. It's huge for me. It's so exciting, but it's all new, right? Like it's all new. And I'm learning so much about this world. By the way, if you do want to join the Facebook group, we're about to hit 1000 members, Daily Dose of Donna, free Facebook group, get in there. And all the links will be below in the show notes if you're new here. Um, so I want to talk about why I mentioned all of that, because I don't say that in every episode. If I did, you guys would be bored. The reason why I mentioned that is because I was a fan of all these reality shows and I was a fan of listening to a lot of these podcasts that recap the reality shows and that talk about these things. And I was a fan of Jeff Lewis Live, okay? Those were the things that I would listen to all the time. I'm saying up until I started the show. So like my weekly shows that I would listen to all the time, um, Jeff Lewis Live Daily. I would listen to Bitch Sesh without fail once a week. That is my show. I freaking love it. I mean, now there are subscri subs subscription base. So I don't know how easy it is for you guys. And if you, you may not listen to it anymore, but if you used to love it, you would know. I listen to the occasional Watch What Crappens. I would listen to the occasional, you know, Danny Pellegrino. I listen to Kate Casey. Like there's certain shows that I always listen to. I'm going to sneeze. It's horrible. <laughs> Excuse me gosh, I don't edit these shows either. So good luck. Thank you. So when I first started doing the show, I was immediately, um, not immediately, but in about March, I was drawn into this Heather McDonald, Megan Weaver situation. 
Everyone who knows, knows. It's my first podcast episode on YouTube that really, really took like um, got momentum and it wasn't on purpose. I had no idea. When I tell you I had no idea that there was this whole subculture of huge, huge Jeff Lewis and Juicy Scoop fans. I didn't know. I mean, I assumed that these people have fans, but I didn't know that they're all on YouTube or they're all on TikTok or whatever. Like I didn't know. So I was just talking about things that I was obsessed with. I was talking about Vanderpump Rules. I was talking about you know, um, different housewives. I was talking about different different stories. And then one episode where I talked about the Megan Weaver, Heather McDonald, big fight that happened in Palm Springs. If you know, you know. And if you don't, find that episode. I can try to link it below, but I don't know if I'll be able to do that. But it's out there, trust me. That episode really got me on the radar for a lot of you guys, because that's just the way, like even right now on TikTok, I am getting a lot of comments saying, that's how I found you. That's how I found you. Okay. I didn't know, considering this was like my second or third episode ever to post on YouTube, I'd been doing the show on audio for three months, but I didn't know that this was going to happen. I didn't see um, an opportunity in that moment where I'm like, I'm going to talk about this because it's going to get the clicks. I had no freaking clue that you guys were out there. And I say this because I really want to be clear why I talk about what I talk about. I talk about what I talk about because I think I would do anything to have a podcast to listen to that broke down the things I loved to listen to and talk about. Like I am talking to you about things I want to hear. And that's really it, right? And I used to say this when I was offering coaching for Instagram or for, you know, social media or video coaching, which is like, I still do it every once in a while for the right client, but I say the same thing. What do you like to watch? What kind of content do you like to, to you know, to consume? That's the content you create. So I started creating the stuff that I wanted to consume and I wasn't finding. There are some recap podcasts out there that talk about these things. Of course, I'm going to shout out Sarah from Jeff Lewis Obsessed. She does a great job talking about Jeff Lewis and a couple other things like this. But I wanted my show to do, to be about this. So the reason why I bring that up is because Heather McDonald comes up sometimes in my content, right? She came up with that Jeff Lewis. It was like the Jeff Lewis connection. It really started because of Jeff Lewis for me. And there was a, so there was a Heather McDonald Megan Weaver, who is a Jeff Lewis co-host drama. And then that led me into other content that had something to do with Heather McDonald. Like I would talk about it every once in a while. And most recently in July, I have this Facebook group, which I was telling you about. And when I tell you the comments on my Facebook group are always really great because you guys always say what you want me to talk about, right? You're always like, Donna, can you break down? Da, 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 da. So all of a sudden, all these comments came in. Can you break down this Justin Martin deal? And Heather McDonald situation. Now I've been listening to Heather. I've been listening to Heather McDonald since the Megan Weaver drama. In fact, that became like a catalyst for me to listen to Juicy Scoop Obsessed or Juicy Scoop. Her her Facebook group is obsessed, and I started to listen to every episode because I actually found a lot of it really entertaining. I do. I think it's a good show, and. Justin Martindale was a guest in July, and I'm going to break it all down for you guys in just a moment. And right after that, shit went down. And you guys were curious because a lot of you are Juicy Scoop fans. A lot of you are Justin Martindale fans. A lot of you are just people and are curious about what's going on behind the scenes. A lot of you like to hear this kind of, you know, behind the, the, the fourth wall podcaster and radio drama. We talked about it all week long with the, you know, Up and Adam and Zach Peters. And, and, you know, we talked about it with Brandy and Julie, and we talked about it with Jeff Lewis and Megan and Heather. Like you, this is definitely content that we talk about all the time. I say this definitely importantly, because Heather McDonald is someone that has been doing what I am doing for years. Okay. And I respect that. I respect other people in my industry. And I really, really don't want you guys to think that I am here to bash anyone. Now, a lot of you guys are going to want me to bash people because I've seen the comments being like, Donna waffles. I waffle. Well, I don't waffle. I know really clearly 
how I stand, but I'm also not a bully. I'm not a bitch. I'm not a bully. And I like to bring you guys the the gossip, the fa- but mostly factual. And I'll give you my spin on it for sure. But never, ever do I want you guys to think that I'm sitting here trying to take anyone down. But I have to talk about the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is why I got 475 texts and DMs last night saying the episode is up. So let me go back. Justin Martindale is a comedian who is a well-established comedian. He's probably not a super household name, but like I said yesterday, no one in these reality comedi- like comedian places usually are unless you're, you know, you have a TV show every day or something. But there's so many talented people that aren't household names. But Justin Martindale has been around the block. He's been working for years. He is a mainstay comedian in many, many places. In Los Angeles, he lives here. And we probably, a lot of us know him because of Heather McDonald. So shit went down. In July, and no one really knew the story. And don't worry, you're going to hear the story for those of you that want the breakdown. But no one really knew the story. So when people start to realize that there's shit going on, for example, people not showing up to certain live events that they said that they were going to, or maybe people unfollowing people, or people not liking other people's content, you start to question things. And the fans started to question things, and no one was giving the honest truth of what was happening with this rift until it was mentioned on a Patreon episode last week. Now I am not a subscriber of Heather's 20, I think it's $20 a month. Um, Get me behind gates, I think it's called, but she did go through kind of what her side of this, Justin, what she doesn't even think is a very big rift. It's no big issue. We're fine kind of situation until the weekend where Justin Martindale very openly unfollowed Heather on Instagram. And then he released a podcast episode last night where at the tail end of the episode for the last 30 minutes or so, he spoke all about what really went down. So do you guys want to hear what really went down? I took notes. Okay. So... Here is kind of the rundown, and I'm going to try to make it as fast as possible because if you want a 30-minute, like, story of it, you can go listen to his. And you know what? I would highly suggest to listen to everyone's side, right? So go and listen to it if you're interested in hearing from him and give him the numbers, you know, regardless, because we're using him as content. So go and give him the numbers. He basically starts by saying that he has been a huge fan of Chelsea lately, and he was a huge fan of that show years and years ago when Heather McDonald was on. Chris Frangiola was on. Uh, Fortune was on, Sarah Colonna was on, and he looked up to these comedians as mentors. He thought they were all amazing. He also said that he wanted to be on the show. He wanted to be on Chelsea Lately, as any young comedian would, but he never was given the opportunity. But he felt really, really just like he was inspired by them. Okay. He looked up to these people. He said, 10 years ago, she asked me to go on the road with her. So Heather McDonald asked Justin to go on the road, and he was stoked. He said they got along so well. They really meshed. They had so much fun. Everything was good. He doesn't mention any drama or any, um, you know, anything wrong. I look like an older, an older camera, Candace Cameron. Awesome. She's older than me. But thank you so much. I appreciate that. The hell? <laughs> She's older than me. But it's a good thing to know that I look old. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so. He says he was with her on and off for years and years and years. He said he would, he was even with her back in February of 22 when she had this infamous, you know, passing out incident where she, you know, she passed out on stage. We've all seen this, or you, if you don't, you can Google it. Um, she had some sort of head injury. She went to the hospital. He was there for her until the family came. He couldn't go, or he couldn't go to the hospital because he's not actually family. He was like, first person that would contact everyone, all her like loved ones. And he was the first person back on Juicy Scoop right after it happened. She, he said, yes. He said, everything has been pretty good. And like, everything's been good with her. She was a mentor. She was a sister. And she was a friend or so he thought. His words. Six months ago is when things, I guess, went sour. Okay. In March. 
March was when there was this big drama between Kelly and, I'm sorry, Heather and Megan, okay? But even earlier than that, he starts by saying, listen, I am not rich and I am not famous, but I am a well-established comedian and I am well-known in this comedy world. He said they were at the Bourbon Room one night, which it's so funny. The Bourbon Room is like so big right now because Sheena Shea did her live podcast the other night at the Bourbon Room. That's where there was drama between Zach Peters and Up and Adam. That's where Heather McDonald was actually the guest. Like it all ties together. It's so funny. So Krista Lamas, who is a friend of um, Jeff Lewis and like a co-host, sometimes a chump, and then also a friend of Heather's, she is an investor in the Bourbon Room. This, this live venue event place. And so Justin starts to become friendly with Krista as well. Well, they're over at the bourbon room one day and they see Jeff Lewis. I don't know if Heather is there or not, but Justin sees Jeff Lewis. They go up to each other. They start chatting. He doesn't know a lot about Jeff or her, you know, his people or whatever. Jeff says, I think you're so funny. I would love to book you on my show, but I can't. Now, remember, everything I'm saying is what Justin Martindale said, okay? This is not my personal experience. Because Jeff Lewis said to Justin, allegedly, I have to have Heather McDonald's approval, and I'm not giving that for you. Meaning, Justin Martindale was held back from this amazing, and you know what an amazing opportunity is to be a chump on Jeff's show, a recurring chump. It's huge. But apparently and allegedly, Jeff Lewis said, I can't do that because Heather. I, that ju I just want you guys to sit with that for a second because if that is true, which I wish and hope Jeff Lewis can talk about it, but if that is true, for someone that is not multimillionaire, someone that is just getting by, we all know how challenging the economy is. We also know how hard it is to live here in Los Angeles, to be a struggling actor, comedian. Even if you're getting booked left and right, it's not... It's not like Justin's opening at the Caesars or whatever in Vegas. Like, it's not insane money to be a comedian. You do it for very various reasons. And of course, the bigger you are, the more money you'll make. But it is a struggle. And we all know this. So for someone to hold someone back, that sucks. That really, really sucks. If that's true. Um, okay. It's Justin Martindale's birthday in March. He's in New York. He ends up having a really tough day because he has a delay. He's with his boyfriend. He can't, he's not even able to go to his party or like the party. He misses the party because of the delay. He's having this really tough travel day. And that is the day that Heather calls Justin and says, oh my God, I need to tell you what just went down with Megan. So on Justin's birthday, Heather never said, according to Justin. I mean, I don't know if this is true. Never said, how's your birthday? How happy birthday? Like nothing towards Justin, but more just about, oh my God, I can't tell you like how bad this was. Megan just yelled at me, et cetera. We all know, we all know kind of the fallout of that conversation with him, her and Megan. She was very upset, understandably, by the way. And Justin says, I spent my birthday while I was going through my own shit, travel delays, et cetera. And I spent my birthday, um, coaching Heather, like on how to move forward because that's who I was, you know, I'm her friend and I don't know a lot about Megan Weaver, of course, I don't know her very well. And because of that, of course, I want to take Heather's side. And I just said this yesterday, you guys, you don't know, like if you, if you have two people that you know, who are arguing or struggling with each other, who do you usually go like, whose side do you usually jump on? It's usually the person who you like more. That's really the truth. Like, if you, with the Justin, I mean, sorry, with the Julian Brandy and the Jeff Lewis, it was clearly two sides. There was two sides, both had their opinions, and it divided the Jeff Lewis fans. With the Heather and Megan, we saw it before. It's, this is a common thing with Housewives, right? Anytime there's a fight with Housewives or Vanderpump or any of these reality shows, the t like the Teresa versus the Melissa teams. Like it's crazy how big we become, you know, divided by this. So he said, I, of course, took Heather's side. So 
Next thing you know, a couple weeks later is that Cabo trip. We all remember if you're a fan of Heather or Jeff or any of these, they all went to Cabo. It was very, very soon after this big falling out. This is in April. And Heather ended up going to Cabo, staying at a different hotel with Krista Lamas. Remember Krista, I mentioned her already. She's friends with Justin. She's friends with Jeff. She's the investor at the Bourbon Room. She also has a young daughter. So Heather brought her teenage son. Krista bought her younger daughter. And we saw a little bit on stories and they were in Cabo. Apparently, there was a huge fight in Cabo. And some, like, some rumors are saying it was about a restaurant. But according to Krista, who then told Justin, of course, it was because Krista mentioned to Heather about why don't you compensate your regular co-hosts. So just to give you a little bit of the back background, Heather McDonald, I didn't know that. I knew she was in the Valley somewhere, but she shoots in, in uh, Woodland Hills. And like, just so you guys kind of understand where that is, um, if you're in the Valley, I'm in Sherman Oaks, right? So when you're in Hollywood, you're on one side of the hill. Once you kind of go over the hill from Hollywood, assume you're in like Universal City, Studio City, and then you keep going west, then all of a sudden you're in Sherman Oaks, which is where I am, very close to Studio City. Keep going west, then you cross the big 405 freeway. Now all of a sudden you're on, you're in Encino. And then you're in Tarzana. And then you're in um, like Reseda. And then you're in like, like Topanga. I don't really know these areas as well, but like Calabasas. And then you're in Woodland Hills. Like it's, it's far. Okay. And LA traffic. So I know Justin mentioned he lives near Laurel Canyon, which is like Hollywood Hills. It's an hour drive, I would say, maybe 40 minutes on a good day, okay? So he was going, he said, 33 times in the last three years, I think he said, driving all the way to Woodland Hills, doing the show, which is an hour, hour and a half, and then driving all the way back. So this is a huge chunk of time. This is three, four hours of your day. And yes, it's incredible exposure to be on a show like Heather McDonald's. Her numbers are through the roof. She does very well on this podcast, okay? YouTube, I mean, think about how many of us know Justin Martindale because of Juicy Scoop. But two things can be true. Exposure is important, but also getting compensated is important. And Jeff Lewis talks very openly about how he pays every single one of his guest co-host chumps every single time they come especially if they're recurring regulars, like the Dugs, the Megans, the MJs, the um, <clears throat> Joey, whatever. I think, I've heard he pays them $300. Jeff Lewis pays each one of those, those recurring chumps $300 per show. So Krista had started to mention to Heather on this Cabo trip, allegedly, why aren't you paying your co-hosts? I guess Heather immediately, you know, at first she was like, well, I, I think the, the fight was that she didn't agree. And she said the exposure is more important. A lot of you guys have questions about this idea of paying your guests for podcasting. The difference here is you don't usually pay a guest unless it's like an exclusive get, i.e. caller daddy Ariana. You don't usually pay your guests, but it's different when you have a recurring guest who is kind of like a co-host then it's really kind of a job, right? So anyway, he did say that he started getting paid in May. So something happened on that Cabo fight that did get Heather to turn around and start paying her guests, which is great, which is great, okay? He said, we were getting paid well. I mean, she just bought a new house. She just bought a new car. We were getting paid well, good. In May, this telethon comes up. Now, this is where the shit really starts to go down. Justin Martindale was working on this telethon, being very, very involved in it. It was called Drag Isn't Dangerous. Justin Martindale is openly uh, gay. He is very much an active part of the LGBTQIA plus community. He's an ally. He's part of that. He's really, he, it's important to him. And he said many, many celebrities volunteered their time and effort to make a video. He mentioned like Charlize Theron. Um, he mentioned a bunch of them, but I don't remember who else. And... He, um, so he does the show in May. He does Juicy Scoop. And right after, like as they're packing up their stuff or whatever, he goes to Heather and says, um, hey, you know, do you think you can just create this video? 
the short video supporting this, this telethon of drag isn't dangerous. And he said that Heather matter of factly looked him in the eyes and said, no, I won't do it. And his re her reasoning was something along the lines of her fans. Just so you know. Okay. I'm just going to say this is a side note, but I just posted in my Facebook group the other day that I don't delete comments for all of you guys th that like have said that I'm deleting comments. I'll tell you what comments I'm deleting. You dare say one thing, anti-Semitic, homophobic, anti, you know, anyone's sexuality, gender, religion, color of their skin, ethnicity, nationality. You call people horrible names, you're out. I don't, I don't tolerate that. Okay. Do not tolerate it. So <laughs> it's very, very interesting to say that I can't do a video for, um, for you to support you about something that I think is pretty like, I mean, it's definitely a political statement. It definitely comes off a little bit like picking a side when you say drag isn't dangerous because it's been very strongly a conservative versus a, a liberal kind of frame of mind. We've seen this in, in the uh, news a lot. And I mean, it's either you believe it or not, right? Like it's either you believe that drag is dangerous or drag isn't dangerous. That's it, right? So a lot of you guys are commenting about this. You don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. You shouldn't have to, you know, she shouldn't have to be forced to do anything. Absolutely, she shouldn't. She chose not to do it. But that to me is very telling for a person, or Justin said, that to me is very telling for someone whom I support. Justin is is of of this community right he's not a he's not doing drag that i know of but he's gay and this matters to him and i am always for and you guys know a lot of you guys are here on the tiktok live and you guys know if you're watching this and you've watched me enough i have talked about this very much because i know this gets political when we bring up heather mcdonald stuff and especially what i'm about to talk about i'm going to tell you right now <laughs> Some of the people I love more than anything in my life are strongly conservative. And some people that I love more than anything in my life are strongly liberal. I do not personally hold it against you if you don't believe the way I believe. But if I am very, very strongly... um passionate about, like, just say, imagine I have this big fundraiser about like, you know, protecting Jewish people from hate crimes. And I ask my friend who has a huge audience and I say, do you think you can do a video to protect Jews from hate crimes for a telethon? And you say no, because of my fans. I don't think I can do your show anymore. <laughs> like, if your fans don't, don't support something that strong that I think is like such a whatever. Okay. I'm not going to go down because I just see that you guys can take this the wrong way and I don't want to do it. Let's go back to the facts. Do you see why I'm nervous to talk today? Okay. Um, so Justin said he was pretty thrown, pretty shaken by Heather. So blatantly saying, no, I won't do it. Um, around this time, Oh, and then he also mentioned the telethon was a huge success. All these people were part of it. Krista, he brings up Krista again. She was taking calls in the background for free. I'm like, you should have called me. I would have happily been there taking calls. This is this would be so fun. Thank you guys so much. Um, okay. He started to notice that her content was talking about a lot of political things. She was talking a lot about Dylan Mulvaney. She was talking a lot about, you know... Um, anything kind of related to trans situations. She was bringing in a lot of political content into the pop culture realm when we're used to hearing her talk about Scandaval. 
And so Justin was just like aware of that. And he started to question, what am I doing being part of this show? Because he said he was getting a lot of phone calls for people saying, you know, Donna, I'm Donna, Justin, like, who is this that you're with? Because why is she supporting A, B, and C? He goes to, oh, wait, June, June 3rd, there's a pool party. He said, June 3rd was the first day of sun in forever. I remember this so well. If you guys were watching my show back in May, June, I was like, I am sick of June gloom. I just need some sun. I was so depressed. Anyway, I started to, um, June 3rd was right before we went to Israel. I remember this very well. And it was the first day of sun and Justin got together with Krista and Justin's boyfriend and Krista's daughter. And it was like very small, maybe a couple other people. And they had a little hang in their backyard. Okay, in Chris's backyard, this pool party. And while they were there, they were getting text messages from Heather um, asking, like, my fans are wondering why I wasn't invited, et cetera, which is just uncomfortable. For anyone out there who has been in those situations, like, it's really hard when you get a, a message from someone asking, like, why wasn't I invited? That's awkward, right? It's awkward. Okay. Um, July 11th. July 11th, Justin Martindale does his last episode on Juicy Scoop. He mentions that there was a lot of prep usually that would come his way before he did the episode, probably when she had that producer that was working with her. So there would be like a rundown of what we're going to talk about. For example, when I did the Zach Peter's show the other day, he sent me four topics and some articles about four topics. This is what we're going to cover today. I loved it. Easy to do. No problem. Um, Justin didn't get a rundown. He said it kind of stopped at some point. So he had no rundown of what they were talking about that day. And he comes in and they start talking about movies and they're talking about Barbie. And she brings up Sound of Freedom. Now this is where things get a little bit tricky, but she brings she brings up Sound of Freedom. And um she said uh oh gosh, what am I missing? Gosh, I don't want to know. Oh my god, the comments are so Okay. Um, she brings up the movie Sound of Freedom and Justin doesn't know about this movie. He doesn't know it's coming up. And this is, like I said, I'm speaking from what Justin is saying. You have a problem with this? Go to Justin. Don't go to me. I am just repeating his words. Do you understand? What I say about this is not Donna Bowling. I am a robot. Please don't yell at me in the comments. So <laughs> Justin makes like a comedian type joke. This is what Justin says. I made a joke keeping light like, oh, wow, what a summer thriller. What a movie for summer. What a summer, you know, blockbuster about Sound of Freedom. He has not done research on the movie. He doesn't know what it's about. He has no idea. I mean, he knows, I think, that it's about child trafficking. I don't think he knows details. I don't think he knows anything. Okay. Then he mentions at the end of the show, I'm going to Disneyland tomorrow with Krista and her daughter. He wakes up the next morning at 6 a.m. or whatever. He sees the episodes up because that's how it works. Like she records the day before and then it's up in the middle of the morning, early, early morning, I think. And he wakes up and he sees the comments. And then he goes into a conversation where he says, listen, I have done so many shows as a podcaster, okay? I've been on so many podcasts. I've been on this, this, Joe Rogan. I don't remember all the other ones he said. He's like, I have been on so many different shows. And some of these shows are like, men, hetero men. And I've gotten the occasional, you're not funny, you're annoying, you're ugly, you know? Get this guy off my screen, comments. He goes, I have gotten used to that. But there's something very, very challenging to wake up and see comments calling you a pedophile, a groomer, a child molester, and even worse, the F word for gay people. I'm stopping because I am so fucking upset that some people think it's okay to talk to people about this this way. I have a lot of people in my personal life who are, you know, not, they don't uh, identify as straight. It's awful. Um, 
he's like, call me unfunny. You know, like you can call me these names. I don't care, but you're going to now put these words into my, into who I am because I am, I made a joke about a movie I didn't know anything about. By the way, you guys, when I just talked about this movie a few months ago with this conversation, I was told me in my comments that I am a child groomer. You can't win with some of these people, right? Some of these people say crazy, crazy things, hurtful, hateful things that are completely unfounded. If you didn't like Barbie, do I call you, uh, you know, uh, anti-woman, you know, misogynist, disgusting, homophobe? Like, no, you just didn't like the goddamn movie or you didn't know about the movie. What is this? Why are we taking things so literally? Why do we have to make something so big out of something so nothing? And it's only one-sided sometimes with these things. It's killing me, you guys. So I don't want to be called anything here from this conversation. Okay. So, um, So he woke up to all these comments and he reaches out to Heather. And he tells her and she says, You're a comedian. Just like, stop reading the comments. Don't worry about it. But then he started to realize that she was liking a lot of the comments that were calling him these names. And she was not standing up for him. And she was not saying anything back. And her response was, I don't read the comments. I just like things. I Sometimes I just like things. Which, by the way, we've all done that. We've definitely all done that before, but not consistently. Like once in a while by mistake, Jennifer Aniston, right? Like she commented or she liked one of those Jamie Foxx things and then she was like, I didn't. It's all happened. But, but it is definitely a, um, a challenge or a problem when your, your guest is called and your guest and your friend is called these things and you're liking it. So he says, please say something. I'm scared, he says. I'm getting these crazy death threats. I'm scared. And she said, I can't. I can't, I can't, um, I can't control my fans. Uh, I can't control you guys. Like I can't go into your houses and control you, but I know that I set the tone. And if I am here as Daily Dose of Donna telling you that, like, I do not ever accept or will tolerate hateful, mean comments, and you are not considered a good doser if you're out there freaking talking horribly to people and saying mean things, then absolutely, like, that's my way of, control is a bad word, but that's my way of setting the tone so that hopefully you are a great extension of me. And I never want, if someone out there is just like, you know, berating me, I don't want you to call them names and give them death threats. You can stand up for me, but there's a big difference there. You know what I mean? Anyway, he didn't, she didn't stand up for him. He was very hurt by it. He said, there's no way that I can support someone that doesn't support me. Um, she talked to him on the phone and she's like, so what do you want to do? Do you want to cancel Napa? He canceled Napa. He canceled Vegas and they basically haven't talked. I think she texted him one time saying, how are you? Or something like that. How was Comic-Con? I can't remember. How was Just for Laughs, the Toronto festival? And then he said, and she said, good. Um, He spoke about it on John Hill's serious radio show a week or two ago. He just said, I needed a break from the grown woman drama. And then she went on Patreon over the weekend and she spoke about it big time to um, her audience, like she opened up about it. And I think that Justin says that was the final straw. So that's the rundown. That's what happened. It made me incredibly uncomfortable to talk about. I'm not going to lie. It did. For a few reasons. I don't want beef with people. I really don't, especially people in this industry. Um, but at the same time, this is like, I don't know about you guys, but in my Facebook groups that I'm part of, not just Daily Dose of Donna's, but many, this is what people are talking about. This is what you guys want to talk about. So I am going to talk about it. 
I feel it's a sad situation. I don't know Justin Martindale and Heather McDonald for years and years. Like I said, I just started listening to Heather this year. I don't know the history, but either way, it is sad. I don't believe she has um, responded yet. She releases a podcast on Tuesday and Thursday, so tomorrow's Thursday. So I don't know if she will talk about it. I don't know if she'll mention it on her Patreon this week. I don't know how she's going to react. Or is she just going to, you know, almost like just like avoid talking about it? And that's possible too. I'm just telling you guys what happened. So I want you guys to go ahead and, you know, you can give your thoughts in the comments. Be respectful. Be kind. Please, please, please do not assume that someone just talking about it is a certain way that you don't know, you know, horrible, horrible things. Um, be aware that I am a person and a human being, just like Justin, just like Heather, okay? So no one here should be torn down in their comments. No one here should be murdered in their Facebook groups. Just remember that people have, have you know, hearts and sensitivity. So like I'm telling you what I heard from Justin Martindale, and I'm also telling you that Heather has a side too, and we need to hear it, right? We need to hear it. I don't believe Jeff, someone's asking, did Jeff Lewis address on his show? I don't believe they did. Um, I don't believe he did. Um, a, a comment from Don, I've ended a friendship of over 20 years because they didn't defend me when I got attacked. Um, I had a situation a few years ago from in a workout situation from an instructor who treated me so awfully. It was such a bad experience. And I had to stop talking to multiple friends for a while there who didn't see my side and come and like help me out with it. This is a common thing. You know, it's a common thing. And people are scared to stand up for their friends if they know that they're going to get backlash for it. People are scared to stand up for political things if they know they're going to get backlash for it. People are scared to say, to talk about stuff like this if they know they're going to get backlash for it. Um, I think the goal is like, and I'm shaking, you guys. I'm literally actually shaking. Like my hands are shaking under my desk because I'm so like, I am, I'm of the believer, and this is maybe naive, but I'm of the believer that we can have fun and talk about gossip and talk about pop culture and talk about drama and talk about reality TV and talk about these amazing stories that we're hearing about and all the things. I'm a believer that we can do it without being hateful. And I hope I'm right. <laughs> but I've questioned that. I've gotten some really, really horrible things said to me in the last few months, and I'm like, holy shit, my skin needs to thicken up, right? Um. But just, it's just the gossip, right? Okay. I'm going to leave it there. Let me know in your comments what you guys think. I have a Patreon episode that I'm releasing later today. Oh, guys, it's good. It's good. It's a lot of Housewives insider information that I got. It's off the record convo shit. It's going to be good. We're going to talk about it. Um, the episode usually gets released around 5 or 6 p.m., but I have to pick my kids up from the bus, so it may be a little later, but whatever. You're going to have it later today. I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you, dosers. Thank you for supporting. Be kind. Be nice in your comments to me and to everyone around you. Trust me. Trust me. It feels better to be nice. Bye. <laughs> Uh...